Hey family, this week we are talking about passion, purpose, and why these things might not be what they seem. Well, it's easy to celebrate words like passion and purpose, fulfillment and character, but this week we want to break them down. We want to talk about pros and cons and how you can fit them all together to live your best life. We are so excited to be coming at you this week with all things passion and purpose because Shyla and I actually, in our journey, have found an evolving meaning around these words, and it's been very instrumental for us in understanding ourselves. Well, for those of you who are also on this growth path of personal development, of professional qualifications, of character development, of self-help, of growth, of however you're calling that quest that you're on to learn and grow and expand yourself, you're going to likely run into these terms just like we have. And if and if you stumble upon someone like Tony Robbins, right, his tagline, or at least from 25 years ago and what it has been most of his life, is live with passion. And passion's where we want to start today because because it's where so many of us start in this quest for growth, in this looking and searching for that deeper meaning of life. We start with passion, uh, and that's both good and can be further developed. Well, look, we're not here to say passion equal bad, but let's talk a little bit about some refining ideas around passion, because my likely like you, when Shyla and I very first started out on this path, we were like, man, passion is it. Passion is the place to be. We got to like, you know, live your passion and you'll never work a day in your life. And all of this idea around passion, it sounds like it's going to be this awesome, great thing that you just simply can't get enough of. But when we looked up the definition of passion, one of the definitions really stood out to us. And it came down to this. Passion is strong and barely controllable emotion. Now, if we think about strong and barely controllable emotion being a driving force for our life, does that sound like a life of peace? Well, maybe it does to you, but it certainly didn't to us. I mean, strongly and barely controllable emotion, (laughs) that sounds pretty volatile. (laughs) I do want to be in that state sometimes, right? It's exciting. It's invigorating. You're swept away. Right. Where there's momentum, we lose track of time, right? That's what passion is to me is we want that, but it is that emotional state. It's an internal state state of being. And when most of us are looking at our lives and why we're here and we're asking those bigger questions, it's about more than I want to feel good on the inside. And that's where passion stops, right? Because we're talking about a barely controllable emotion. We're talking about an internal experience. So one, it can be a rocky internal experience if we're going to use passion as our guiding light. And two, it can be something that maybe keeps us in a shallow state or uh, pushes us to follow things that might not be healthy, right? I feel really passionate about Cool Ranch Doritos. Like so, <laughs> so good. passionate. I get barely controllable emotion when even a bag is around me. Even just thinking about it right now, I have endorphins coursing through my veins. But if I made Doritos Cool Ranch my entire life uh, journey and focus, and it would be pretty one dimensional and it definitely wouldn't be healthy. And I probably wouldn't be able to grow and expand in the way that I'm really thinking about when I think of a word like passion. So what, if six years ago, five years ago, we used to give talks where we would tell people about passion and this being the thing that you need to find. And then we came across this definition that really helped, you know, on this journey, we're like, okay, well, passions are really doing it for us. And it doesn't seem to be landing with our audiences either. So what is it? So we we're doing our research. Of course, we go to John Maxwell, we go to Tony Robbins. We, we look at all of our, all of our, uh, our mentors and our books and, and what we've read. And we're like, okay, we think we got it. It's this other P word. And so we added another slide to the presentation so we could talk about how this is involved. And the P word is the word purpose, right? This is about purpose-filled living, or as that Pastor Rick Warren likes to say, the purpose-driven life, right? This is this is where we wanted to land, okay? Purpose. Now, the definition here, it's a lot, it's a lot juicier and, and way better than strong or barely controllable emotion. Now, purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Now, this feels much more profound, and we're definitely getting more depth with a definition like that, but we also get something else with a definition like that, and that is a, almost said a bad word, a lot, (laughs) a lot ton, a whole lot, a a sizable amount. (laughs) 
of pressure. That is humongous pressure, right? The reason for which something exists. Like, I'm sorry if at 19 years old, you don't know the reason for which you exist. Who does? If we're lucky enough, we'll find out by the end of our lives or for the rare individual, there are those who say from age six on, I know what I want to be. I know what I was created to do. For most of us, the reason for which we exist is a lot of pressure. It's a, it's a dichotomy that doesn't have to be, right? Right? black or white. The reason means there could be, there could not be a reason, right? It's, it's forcing this kind of decision and the structure around something as beautiful and mysterious and magnificent and magical as the human existence. So we really think that purpose, when we focus on it in this way, is now we're talking about an external experience and we're talking about something that has a lot of pressure associated with it. Well, pressure and one dimensionality, right? We get into purpose and it's the if you have a reason, not not the many reasons for which someone was created and exists, it says the reason, the reason. So like, what is the reason? Like, I don't know. Not only is that a lot of pressure, but once you figure out the reason and you start going for it in your life, what happens when you find out or if you find out that that wasn't the thing, right? The reason. Now, now do you cease to exist altogether because that wasn't your purpose? Well, I don't think so. So, okay, we start to find the flaws in purpose. So we add another slide to the PowerPoint. As we start to get out there, talk about our success principles, we're like, look, passion is great. Purpose is great. And, you know, I think it was... Uh, Jay Shetty, who says that passion is what you do for yourself and purpose is what you do for others. And we need these things in our life. They're very important to us. But we like when we're when we're looking to focus on growth, what do we look focused to do? Where do we put our energy? We, we don't want to put our energy into passion. We don't want to put it into purpose. So we centered around the idea of fulfillment. And we'll give a definition here. Fulfillment is satisfaction or happiness as a result of fully developing one's abilities or character. This gives us so much that we can hang on to here. And that's what we love about it, right? If we're thinking like, what's the answer? And you, whatever the question is, you're phrasing it however works in your model of the world, but it's some kind of why am I here, right? Like, like so, so why am I here? What is my purpose? What is my passion? Why do I exist? What's the point of life? What's being a human all about? Whatever version of this question that you're asking, this is where most of us end up. It's like we start looking at passion. We start looking at purpose. And for Kay and I, then finding this idea of fulfillment seemed like the most accurate reflection of what it is that we're actually seeking when we go to look for that deeper meaning, that spice of life, that je ne sais quoi, that happiness, right? At least in this definition, we're actually talking about happiness and satisfaction. The first one, if I seek passion, I seek uncontrollable emotion. If I seek purpose, I seek the reason for which something exists. Neither one of those say, you're going to have a good time and feel good about this, <laughs> and right? like your life. <laughs> Most of us, that's what we're looking for, right? I want to feel good. I want to like my life. I want to be happy about what's going on. I want to be feel like I'm making a difference in the world. So when we look at a definition like fulfillment, now we're getting those elements. And for us, that really felt like the sweet spot, right? We get the satisfaction or happiness as a result of fully developing one's abilities or character. Now, the rest of that definition makes it even better because it means we have some control. We have a say. We get to be the ones who develop something, which then it results in the feelings of satisfaction and happiness. And so that was what was so exciting to us about this idea of fulfillment. Now, if you're familiar with Clifton's Strength Finders, uh, there is a strength out there. It's a strength-based personality test where you find out what you're strong at. Shyla and I both have in our top two, the strength of activator. So we love when something comes with an action and this seeking, uh, this thing for us to seek from our lives came with action steps about it, right? Res it the satisfaction or happiness as a result of this action of developing your abilities and your character. So skill building, listening to podcasts just like this. Maybe you tuned in last week to reading week and you got some really great book recommendations. Get out there. Let these lessons help to shape your character. And maybe you're listening to things here that you've heard before. Maybe you read a book and you have an 
idea that you've come across in, uh, in another time in your life, but you come across it again, there's value there for you. We get these lessons repeated to us over and over again. I mean, shoot, advertisers have to show their advertisement to you 14 times before you take action. How many times do you think you need a personal growth and development message to be in front of you before you take action toward your dreams? So give yourself the opportunity of repetition so that you can work toward that fulfillment while you are developing your character. Now, before we head off to break, we'll end you off with this section with a quote from the Second Wind Movement article that we have pulled a lot of our research from here. Basically, your purpose is the reason why you're put on this earth and your passions are your various ways to achieve it. Now, we would probably add then that fulfillment is the art of figuring out how to enjoy it along the way, which selfishly, that's what most of us are after and what we want to unpack a little bit more after this word from our sponsors. We've had some really cool access to some really cool people, and we want to share it with you. We have an amazing interview series of some of the interviews we've done with celebrities like Dr. Deborah Tillman, America's Super Nanny, Dr. Joseph McClendon III, famous neuropsychologist, uh, former professor of UCLA. We've got Dr. Bruce Lipton, author of Beyond Belief, and we even have John Maxwell, the number one leadership expert. Your sisters want to bring you into the room with our most exclusive access. So go to kandshy.com. Right there on the homepage, you will see a button that says, get my celebrity interview series. And we would love to share our access with you. K-A-Y-A-N-D-S-H-I.com. We'll see you over there. We're talking leadership this week. And one of the organizations we are so proud to be at the helm of is the Neuroencoding Institute. We got to co-found the Neuroencoding Institute alongside Dr. Joseph McClendon, the third amazing world-renowned neuropsychologist and incredible mentor and teacher. If you're at all interested in learning more about what the Neuroencoding Institute does and what it can do for you, please visit neuroencoding.com. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore our complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. Okay, we're diving back into this segment with another definition. Now, you heard the word mentioned in the definition of fulfillment, which just as a reminder is the satisfaction or happiness as a result of fully developing one's ability or character. Now, this last word here is character. We want to center here because character and the definition of it that we like is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. So how often are you spending time developing your mental and moral qualities? What I like about moral being placed in here is that I think that starts dipping our toes into the spiritual realm. How often are you working at your mental, your psychology and your spiritual self in order to create more uh, uh, richness in your character and therefore create more fulfillment for your life, which is really just means satisfaction and happiness. Right. That fulfillment being satisfaction and happiness as a result of developing your abilities and your character. Now, those two things, abilities and character, reflect that internal and external as well. Right. So we're getting that dimension that we were missing with just passion and just purpose. Right. Passion's about the internal emotional experience. Purpose is about that outward reason that you are created what you give to others, right? But with fulfillment, we get this satisfaction or happiness based on developing your abilities, right? That's your, your uh, what you're doing for other people, how you're being able to serve humanity and your character, your internal experience of who you are, why you matter, what your values are. So we get the internal and external piece here. And then looking at that character piece here, those mental and moral qualities allowing us to even further bring in that distinguishing, right, that on the inside in that internal experience, we're going to have things like spiritual, like Kay mentioned. We're going to have things like our mental health that sometimes come into play there. We're going to have things like our self-talk, our self-narration, which you've heard us talk a lot about here. All of those things come into character. Plus, it's this idea that allows us to, again, separate that somewhat spirit from the voice inside and realize that we're crafting a person inside of a society that we're presenting each and every day. And that is 
is our character, right? And it's based on our behaviors that it can be demonstrated to others. And so this really helps us understand what it is that most of us are after is likely this idea of fulfillment. And if we want to find fulfillment, we do that through advancing our abilities and advancing and growing our character. I think that the misleading part about passion and purpose shy is that a lot of people think that passion and purpose are things that you're born with, Mm -hmm. right? That I either have it or I don't. I'm either the six-year-old that knew that I was going to be a doctor forever or I don't have that. And I think that that lends a lot to the idea that you brought forward earlier about the pressure that comes with this idea of needing to find your passion and to be on purpose because a lot of people who haven't maybe found the thing and have it be that 100% sureness might feel like they're missing the mark. Well, uh, modern theories around mindset have really brought forward two types of mindset. And and we see this, uh, that there's an idea around a fixed mindset. And we thought about this a lot in the past through people, again, you're either born a star or you're not, right? John Maxwell often talks about how a lot of people think that leaders are born, uh, but really leaders are developed and it is a skill that you develop over time. So this idea that we're fixed with a certain amount of mental, moral abilities and qualities that then play out over the rest of our lives was really popular, I think, up until the the 1990s and early 2000s. And we start to see the theory of the growth theory come into play, where this is where things are always ever expanding. You know, I think it was Alan Rickman who actually started his acting career in his 40s. Like that guy didn't find his passion until he was well into his life and on the way and now as a celebrated actor, even posthumously. So really uh, the, this idea that the fixed theory being something that a lot of us think is at play, but really that growth in this ever expansion of your mindset and of your character is where things are happening. And so we can find happiness and fulfillment inside of that as long as we know how to play the game. I think we see this reflected in even how we talk about these subjects from a very fixed standpoint, where we say, find your passion singularly, where we say, find your purpose singularly, that's very fixed. So if we take passion and purpose and make them plural, just add the S at the end, now we've got a little bit more of that ability to see this in a dimensional way that allows us to go from that fixed idea about passion and purpose to this growth idea of how passion and purpose can fit into our fulfillment path and how that those are both components of what we're searching for when we when we're kind of feeling that questioning sense of who am I or what am I here for or what's it all about we're want, we're wanting to find this cross section of purpose and passion internal and external ultimately resulting in a happy experience that we call satisfaction or happiness uh, well Shyla and I are all about that satisfaction or happiness piece and I think it's important to note that passion and purpose while they aren't necessarily the vehicle to find ultimate satisfaction and happiness, uh, they can add those dimensions to your life. And while they are often talked about together, they are two separate things. Now, I was reflecting on how I'm really purposeful around being a mom. I've known that I wanted to be a mother since I was a kid. I've always had that sort of purpose in my life. I knew that that was something that I wanted to do, bring forward other beings and to raise them. Am I passionate about being a mom? Not always. I don't think I can say that I am. (laughs) I love my children with all my heart. I know that my purpose and I have purpose and I gain satisfaction and happiness as a result of developing my character as a mother and developing my skills around being patient with them and listening and caring for them. All of those things bring me a lot of satisfaction or happiness, but I am not passionate about parenthood. Like it's not something that I wake up in the morning when my kid is crying at 4.30 and I'm like, Like I have no strong or barely controllable emotion about that. Or maybe I do, but it's not positive. (laughs) Yeah, it's not positive passion. And let's remember that there is that side of passion, right? We even have crimes that are signified by an act of passion, passion, right? So we we know that sometimes that emotion does become all the way uncontrollable and it doesn't always express healthy. I know I have intense emotions around parenthood and parenting uh, oftentimes as well. And I also know that being 
being a parent is part of my purpose. There are some people who say I was born to be a mom. It is that is the thing I have been looking forward to. I, I shout out to Robin Manuki and yeah, <laughs> I never want to go back to work. I always want to be with the kids. They want to talk about parenting and parenthood. They want to be involved in that, and that's a beautiful thing. But this example demonstrates that when we see things like, like that, that if we are only thinking about purpose and passion in that singular sense, in that fixed sense, then we don't allow ourselves that ability to say yes and, or to say that's part of my purpose, but not all of my purpose, or that this, I might not have a lot of passion around this, but I have commitment, right? And that's where the, those kind of pieces can come into play. Because we know anybody who wants to be successful at anything is going to have to stay committed even when the emotion subsides. And that's, I think, one of the real big drawbacks of passion is that it is an emotional state, which means that it's transient, that it doesn't last forever. And what do we have to do? What do we know about success is that it takes consistency compounding over time, consistent action, which typically passion runs out pretty fast. And now you have to rely on discipline. You have to rely on structure. You have to rely on other things other than passion, which means passion can't be the only piece of the success pie. Otherwise, everyone who's passionate would be wildly successful. <laughs> right. Everyone who was passionate about anything would be wildly successful. Man, cool ranch Doritos. Oh, they're uh. so good. Honestly, <laughs> I get more of like excitement in my belly around considering cool ranch Doritos than I do my own children. <laughs> <laughs> but would I choose cool ranch Doritos over my own children? No, absolutely no, not. I would not. Right. Yeah. Because that purpose of that momhood in my life and that development of that part of my character is bringing me a lot of satisfaction and happiness. So, so glad. Now, so what now we get to ask this question of like, OK, we get it. Passion and purpose, there are parts, there are dimensions of what we do. If we're after this kind of satisfaction or happiness game, like a lot of us are, we want to center around fulfillment. So, okay, now you know, now what do you do? Well, now we do the hard work of developing our character. And you might think to yourself, uh, like that's just like regular old personal growth and development. Well, it is and it isn't because there's some really cool things that you can do to get clear on what you want and who you want to become that allow you to then act out that roadmap and ultimately create a character that you're proud of that brings you that satisfaction and happiness. So make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the week in the mini sods. We're going to talk about this character crafting. We're going to talk about identifying some of those passion and purpose markers if you're still looking for some of those. And we're going to talk about some of our own experiences along this journey. We'll hope you'll stay tuned the rest of the week as we talk about passion, purpose, fulfillment, and character development. We're always coming at you with love from your sisters, Kay and Shai. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.